Foundations, Crate Training, Easy Peasy Obedience with 101 Dog Spots. With Akira the Boston Terrier and Nikuya the Boxer Puppy. Why Crate Train? Crate training is a great skill for any dog to have, regardless of age. Crates are used for safe transportation, downtime during sports events, short time management, like keeping the dog confined during house inspections or similar. And even if we hope it will never happen, crates are necessary for vet visits and recovery time from injuries. But do keep in mind that it is not recommended to use crates for long time management and potty training. Overcrating and rushing crate training can cause frustration, hyperarousal and increased anxiety. With those details out of the way, let's move on to teach our dogs how to get comfortable with crates. Introducing the crate. Start by setting your crate up and leave the doors open. Let the dog explore the crate and drop a treat on the floor near the crate every time she interacts with the crate. When your dog starts showing interest in the inside of the crate, you can begin to drop the treats into the crate and begin the process of turning the crate into a place where all things magic happen. When introducing the crate, it's important to offer the dog the freedom to enter and exit the crate at her own pace. So if you have a crate with two doors, I would recommend that you leave both doors open in the beginning, just like shown in this video. If you don't have a crate with two doors, don't sweat it. Just be ready to allow your dog a bit of extra time to get used to walking into a small closed space. Being in the crate. Once your dog is comfortable with the presence of the crate, you can begin to just reward her for actually stepping into the crate. Here it's important to reward into the crate. So if you're using a hard top or a fabric crate, I'd recommend that you open up the top to allow you to drop the treats into the crate. The reason we want to feed into the crate is because we want the dog to associate the crate itself with treats magically appearing. This is instead of associating it with us, feeding the treats to them directly from our hands. Dogs are really simple like that, so delivery really makes a difference because it helps the dog to decide where magic happens. Notice that Nikuya is now comfortably standing inside the crate and just waiting for the treats to drop. From this point, I actively have to reset her by tossing treats away from the crate to get her out. This is the behavior we're looking for and want to reinforce. Closing the door. When your dog readily accepts stepping into the crate and standing in there for her treats, you can begin working on closing the door. Since it's important not to stress crate training and Nikuya is not yet ready for the door to be closed, I have switched dog for this part of the demonstration. If your dog shows any kind of distress with you closing the door, this is where you take a step back and build comfort in the open crate. A shortcut to this is to set up your crate in your living room and offer treats like Kongs and long lasting chews in it with the door open. When I first introduce the closed door, I don't lock it. I simply close it and reward Akira for letting me close the door. This allows me to open the door fast in case she starts showing signs of worry. It is not important if your dog stands or lies down for this part. The thing that matters is to build comfort in the sudden confinement. I reset her often during this process by tossing a treat away from the crate and letting her go back in on her own. Once your dog is fine with the closing of the crate, you can begin to take a step away from the crate and leave the door closed. 
As you step back to the crate again, you reward for being in the closed crate by tossing a treat in. Another option is to reward with a long lasting chew while simply supervising the crate. If you have a crate with double doors, you can always use both doors and alternate between them to create a constant source of fun in this game. Staying in the crate. At some point we need our dogs to learn that it is still safe to be in the crate even if we're not within eyesight. Just like the rest of the process, this is something that we build up slowly. I like to start this part of training with simply stepping around the corner. Notice in the video that Akira stands to begin with and looks after me, but after a few repetitions she lies down, confident that I'll show up again. Again, this is also a place where you can utilize a long-lasting chew, but do make sure to come back before the chew is up to avoid distress. From here on, you slowly increase the time away from the crate and remember to mix it up so that you're gone for different time spans. This decreases the risk of distress as we show our dogs that crating isn't just getting longer and longer, but that it can vary and no matter how long, we'll make sure to come back. This was all for today, but before I say happy training, I'd like to remind you all that while crates are indeed good tools, stressing their use without prior training or over crating will work against you and your dog. Crates are also not a necessity of having a dog. So if you are not comfortable with crating, there is absolutely no harm done. People worldwide have dogs without crating them and have done so for many decades. You can too. If your dog is in a position where a crate is a must for extended periods on a daily basis, please consult a professional to help you out. That was all for today, thank you so much for watching and happy training! This video was produced by Laura Fries from Easy Peasy Obedience in collaboration with 101 Dogspots.